It's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. I'm Dr. Manhattan. Obviously. You're dubious. Oh, I'm not dubious. I'm just wondering why the actual Dr. Manhattan is wearing a Dr. Manhattan mask. I don't want to be recognized. Is this a Zeus thing? A Zeus thing? The Greek god. In all the stories, he came down from Olympus trying to get laid, but he turned himself into a swan or something to blend in. I'm guessing you popped down here to Saigon from Mars 20 years after you abandoned humanity. That's not me on Mars. Oh? It's a recording of me carrying out a series of predetermined patterns, like a computer program. It's a decoy so that people think it's you on Mars. Exactly. Then where have you been for the past 20 years? On Europa. It's a moon of Jupiter. Oh, that Europa. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And tonight we'll be reviewing Watchmen Season 1, Episode 8, A God Walks Into a Bar. A bar, not a bar. Admiral a- Akbar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the synopsis for this episode is very short and sweet. It's just Angela's mysterious past in Vietnam is at last revealed. Awesome. So what did you think, Mark? Uh, Well, my first take, I love this episode. So there was so much to learn where Angela was coming from the whole time about heroes and what she does. It also explains why she was so silent, just finding out about her love of Dr. Manhattan. We we saw this through this episode, what they did and why she did what she did. Now in the next episode, we will find out what the outcome is. Yeah, this episode was absolutely crazy. Yeah. I loved it. I loved, and we'll get into it when we get to our top five for sure. Damon Lindelof has captured, for me anyway, it's been a while since I read The Trade, so he really has captured this character incredibly well. And I've I've got a lot in my top five just about just specifically the characterization and how this this episode was done and just everything was, it was just so good. And uh, this, I'm hoping his name is pronounced Yaya, the man playing Cal slash Dr. Manhattan is just great. He, they superb. Yeah. He, he did a great job. I loved it. I just, the way he spoke everything. I was amazed at this. So I think we should get to our top five. Absolutely. So you start off because last week I started off. Yes, yes. So I I just want to start off with the very beginning of the episode. We see Dr. Manhattan wearing a Dr. Manhattan mask. Uh, As he's he's walking through the streets, he bends down and he picks up that mask. Now, we don't know for sure that it's Dr. Manhattan because as we go through the episode, we see other people kind of painted blue and and stuff. And so when he sets down in the, the restaurant or not set before he sets down, Angela's not actually sure that it's him. She just thought it was another guy who was kind of dressed up as Dr. Manhattan. So she's kind of like giving this guy, it was almost just like he was trying to pick her up and, and she's just like, uh, I just want to have a drink at the <laughs> end of the day, you know, but it's, it's uh, to see him wearing the mask. I, I thought it was, and actually they didn't show, they kept showing him. I thought it was real clever what they did with the camera angles there at the beginning because they never really pan up in on him anyway. So we see his hands, we see his, his suit and we see the bottom of his mouth. You know, we see the bottom of the mask and, and see that he's painted blue, but we don't see all of him until much later in the episode. 
Oh, definitely. So I just thought that was great, the way he, he, he wore that mask over his face. Oh, yeah, definitely. We love the idea that, you know, within this episode, we realize that Dr. Manhattan's been here all the time. And honestly, to me, I was like, what the? Mm-hmm. And all the information is thrown out at us. And But the fact that Angela is approached by him and he said he's in love with her and they already know this it's so amazing yeah yeah it's it's great yeah it's like it's it's like a true love story but through the test of time you know i i like <laughs> sort of yeah yeah i know and my number five that would be the whole interaction between dr manhattan and angela the fact that he knew everything before she stated it just like I said before, it predicted the events of their meeting and the outcome that we see in the episode. It, it seemed all set up from the get-go. The actor that played Dr. Matt, you know, Manhattan was great in, in the actual bar with the mask and everything else and doing everything to persuade Angela. And, you know, he wasn't really physically there. If you see, if you watch the actual episode... All you see is the mask. All you see is the nuances of his motions and his voice. That was very, very well done. Yeah, and seeing her reactions to it throughout the whole episode is just great. And realizing that really that whole episode is told from that point of view of the two. I mean, until we get to the very end when, when he says this is the moment, you know, when she's taking the guns out of the cabinet... I think up until that point, well, even no, it is right there at the end. Yeah. Because the the episode ends with her saying that she'll go to dinner with him. So the whole episode in reality is contained in that environment. It's, it's, it's a really, it's a wonderful, and I've got later on in my notes, I've got more about it, but it's just a wonderful storytelling technique. uh, In my, in, in my opinion, anyway, it's just a wonderful storytelling technique to see this told out through this kind of back and forth perspective of her asking questions and then him answering some questions, but not answering uh, everything. And that leads right into my number four, which is, uh, and I don't normally do this. So I went back and I looked at who the writers were, who the director was and uh, awesome. Jeff, the name of the, the, the writer was Jeff Jensen. He co-wrote it with Damon Lindelof. And you can tell there had to be a lot of collaboration between, I'm, I'm assuming anyway, there had to be a lot of collaboration between the two of them in writing this episode because Jeff Jensen did not have a lot of writing credits. Um, so I'm, I'm sure they, they worked together with it. And then also they had to work with Nicole Cassell, who directed this episode. And as you mentioned, uh, and I wrote the man's name down. So if I get it wrong, I'm going to apologize now. But uh, Ab- Yahya Abdul Mateen II hmm. is the name of the actor who's playing Cal slash Dr. Manhattan. And it was just phenomenal the way they developed this character, the way his speech patterns were, the way, you know, he has to talk in such a way to where just in when he's in that um, scene with Adrian Veidt and he's going back and forth between three different time periods, but he's, he's explaining it as if he's existing in all of them at the same time. And then when she talks to him, it was, it, it was, it gave me chills cause it was so well done when she, when Angela talks to him about fear, and he says, and she says, when was the last time you were afraid? And he says, when I walked in, when I walk into the tachyon accelerator to get my watch. Yeah. And you realize at that moment that he's always afraid because he is living in every moment of his life from that point forward. The only break he gets is this 10 year break here where he doesn't know what happens. You know, when she asks her, well, why did it end? Why? And he's like, I don't, or she says like, what happens in between? What leads us to there? What's, what happens to get us here? And he's like, I don't know. He, he says, I have a gap. And that gap is from the moment they put that ring in until that ring was taken out. Yeah. And you realize that he's, he's telling her the story of what he knows of it, which is after, which is everything before that ring is put in, 
put in and everything after that ring was taken out because he tells her, you're going to try to save me and you're not going to be able to. Yeah. And then when they have that moment, when he says, when she's taking the, I guess it was still so amazing. You talk about the love story, the love story of this episode is just uh, when she, when she's taking the guns out of the cabinet and, and he's like, this is the moment he says, he says, 10 years ago, you asked me when the moment was, this is the moment now, because for him, every moment is every is is it happening at the exact same time yeah and she and you can tell the and i love regina uh king plays it amazing, amazing. as well because she comes she comes right back at him with is this supposed to be romantic and he's like it's just truth and it just I, it was it was just wonderful the, this whole episode i can't wait uh, like i wanted to watch this episode multiple times i only got a chance to, to watch it twice since we're uh, the way we're recording or when we're recording Same this. Here. But I am going to watch it again before next Sunday because uh, there's so much in it that... There's so much information that we just don't know. And But the thing is, is the acting is great. Oh, it's 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 amazing. Like, the, this, this... I didn't think it could get better, and it, it did. So. Yeah, exactly. And I love the effect that uh, Regina King does within this. Yeah. Uh, like the way she was able to portray Angela. It's like, all right, hon, time to wake up. Oh and yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, this, it's like, she knew. And the fact that he comes alive at that point, but we don't see it. Mm -hmm. But the fact that she has that symbol that we get from Adrian fight. So, that leads me to my number four, which yes. would be finding out that Dr. Manhattan was the one that came up with the clones where Adrian Veidt was left. Plus finding out that Adrian Veidt wanted to be there, though Dr. Manhattan stated that Adrian wouldn't want to be there. Yeah, that was a that was a, a strange scene when we get that because we've been we've been speculating this whole time. You know, who sent him there? Why is he there? And we come to find out that he chose to be put there. Yeah. That he wanted to be put there. And and now we understand when he says, oh, well, I came here thinking it was a paradise and then found out that it was a prison. And uh, yeah, it, it's still it's still the stuff with with Jeremy Irons is just crazy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but he created his own prison. If you think about it, Adrian Veidt created that. You know, he wanted that that lavish lifestyle. He thought that's what he wanted. Yeah. And but he you know, what I think is interesting is he comes to the same conclusion that Dr. Manhattan came to that. You know, Dr. Manhattan says, I can't stay there because all they want to do is love me. Mm hmm. And I, I need more than that. And when Adrian Veidt starts starts out there, and it, it seems if I calculated this right, I've got it later in my notes. He's there for by the time we we are finding about out about this, he's been there five years. So because it's each episode was a year that was four, and then the trial lasted a year, and then we see him in that prison in that post credit scene when he gets the horseshoe and he starts trying to dig his way out of the, the prison. So I'm assuming that means he's been there five years. So if time is running the same as it's, uh, it, as it ran on earth, then we've still, he's still got five more years to get caught up to 2019 is in my calculation. So I, I think it's just, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just this show just, it's, it's wonderful in answering questions and then, and, and then, uh, you know, bringing, uh, giving us more questions to ask. So, yeah, it's wonderful in amazing ways. Yeah. That leads to my number three. Yes. And I, I talked about it a little bit, but I want to, I want to, I want to particularly talk about just the manner and the order of this episode. And my last point, I talked about the writing, but here I want to kind of focus on the, the editing a little bit, because I think the editing is is real is done really really well here they switch basically between like three and four different timelines and we're getting it from dr manhattan's perspective on each of them and just as they edited that together and i i loved the in fact how it was edited when 
they're talking about her favorite song and and he says well your favorite song is about to come on the on the jukebox and it's tunnel of love and she's like no this is not my favorite song and then then you get the reason why it becomes her favorite song because then she's like well you're trapped in a tunnel and then at the end she's like it's time to come out of the tunnel and so we realize that to him yes it's her, she doesn't know it's her favorite song yet mm-hmm. is is the thing which i thought was was just absolutely brilliant in the way that was written because he she asks he says it's your favorite song and she says no it's not my favorite song he's like well no it's not your favorite song yet it's going to be and i i looked up again i don't normally do this i looked up the man who edited uh, this this episode was named hank van egan and uh, he's done a lot like his editing credits were extensive i want to say he had like 70 something editing credits on his imdb page he did 10 episodes of the leftovers which we know damon lindelof was the creator of that show as well so obviously he's worked well with damon lindelof as well so just this this uh the editing of this program this it's just it was just amazing to me again the way they can they interwove these different storylines together and then at the end bringing them all back yeah yeah i love that it's so amazing and the way that Lindelof does it. So what was your number three? Uh, my number three? Well, that would be the whole Adam and Eve in Europa. The clones based upon the people that John encountered in the castle. They are the people he wanted to represent Adam and Eve in his own absolute thought and construction. But something that Adrian seems to want to destroy at the same time through his imprisonment or his own personal exile. Yeah, that's another one of those things that I thought was was really kind of cool the way they played that in that that you know he he as a child he sees this couple having sex and that's ingrained in the human their human bodies are ingrained in him. So when he yeah. says when he he says he created his own life, his own garden of Eden because he gets that bible and he does he thinks the bible is fictional and he says when I created my life i didn't create it in my image i created it in in their image and mm-hmm. so that's why all the clones are of these two the crookshanks I, i'm assuming that was their name on earth i think so and it was funny i think i was reading in the trivia or in the goofs or something uh for this episode that somebody put it as a as a uh, as a uh, just a point that the woman has tan lines and so if she's just been newly created she wouldn't have tan lines and i really wanted to cr- to go into imdb and correct it and say no she was created in the image that he had in his head of her mm-hmm. so i think it's actually it was probably planned out for her to have the tan lines of a one piece bathing suit because that's what someone of that era would have. have yeah the, the the tan and that's and that's what he created that that's the image that he created her in so she would have those tan lines so i think that's i think that's was completely on purpose of of the of the costuming or makeup or whoever did that but yeah it, it is it is amazing that that he created them but as adrian pointed out in an earlier episode he didn't create them with any purpose they don't have and that's why Adrian just treats them like dolls, treats them like, like nothing. And that's really what he's guilty of there at the end is of not caring about them. So this brings us to my number two. Yes. Okay. So I, I, as I was watching this and I was really trying to work out the timeline in my head, I realized that. So it's it, when Dr. Manhattan is having the conversation with Angela in the bar, he says in six months, you're going to tell me to leave. Mm-hmm. And then he, he talks about them having sex and she's like, I don't, it doesn't sound like I'm telling you to leave. And he goes, no, no, just wait. And then, so then we get the story of six months from now, she tells him to leave. He goes and he visits Adrian Veidt, who is still living in his Antarctica fortress. And he walks in and I, I kind of love that interaction there when, when uh, he says, well, how did you know it was me? 
Adrian. And Adrian says, because Dr. Manhattan is the only man who would show up here naked, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and he's like, would you, would you like me to put some clothes on? He's like, well, I would prefer it, you know? <laughs> and so, uh, so I thought that was a funny, but also at the same time though, he's, he's talking to Adrian and he's talking to Angela in the bar, even though they're six months apart. Cause he says, uh, oh, someone just told me I have a lot of imagination, and you just told me I have a lack of imagination. And for him, it was all happening at the same time, even though it was six months apart. And uh, I thought this is this is cool, too, because this is the only, so far anyway, this is the only interaction we have had between Jeremy Irons and any of our other characters. Exactly. Yeah, it, it was the first that we see him interacting with anybody, just like you said. Yeah. And the fact that it is, of all people, Dr. Manhattan. And John was, uh, according to the comic, to be played as the the evil one, you know? Hmm. Well, yeah. that was what Adrian was trying to paint him as. Yeah. Was the evil one. You yeah. Know? And, and yet... So, yeah, so that's that's it is an interesting point that that here is Adrian appealing to him and and uh, I'll talk about it a little bit when we get to my number one. What is your number two? Uh, well, my number two would be the fact that John knows everything that happens and yet still happens. He's trapped time and all the actions that he creates, but can't change them because he knows they have to be fulfilled from the time he met Angela and took her in his heart till the present, which he knows is a quote unquote tragedy. Yeah. That's another one of those moments in the, in the, the bar there where he, where she says, why would I be with you if it's all going to end in tragedy? And then he, he says a line, I don't have, have it in our quotes, but he says something like, doesn't all love end in tragedy or doesn't all life end in tragedy. And she kind of yeah. goes, well, and, and you could see this is that's the line where she's starting to soften to him because she realizes that, you know, everything does eventually end in tragedy. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's so much of a truth. Yeah. At least in shows. So. True. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my number one. OK, so this is this is what I got from this is that Adrian's original plan A was this device that he has that is supposed to subjugate Dr. Manhattan's presence in his brain. Hmm. And it seems a little, because, because he says, Dr. Manhattan says, well, you've just blown me up. He says, what, what do you remember, John? Or what is it? He says, you've just blown me up. And he says, yeah, that was plan B. Plan A was this device that's supposed to, you know, uh, push your, push you out to where you don't know that you're Dr. Manhattan, which seems a little bit of a stretch to me, but I'll go with it. I'll, I'll give it to him maybe because what would, what would Adrian have done if he had been able to somehow slap that ring on Dr. Manhattan's forehead in, in 1985? What, what would he have done? Then now you have this blue man who doesn't know he's a god. And so th that, that fact that he says that was plan A is a little bit. But it does ex it's, it explains a few things to us. It explains why um, he doesn't, why he didn't know who he was. It explains why he didn't use his powers except as a reflex. Because we get that whole, where he flashes back himself when Adrian says, well, your powers will, you won't use your powers unless your, your life is threatened and you do it as a, as a reflex. And so we find out what happened to the other 7th Cavalry member in Angela's house on the Dark Knight is that he, that's what happened to him. He, he, he had that reflex action and he called on his powers, even though he didn't know he had him. And I love, and I'm going to tie these in together because my number one is really all about Dr. Manhattan. I think it shows us that if you, if you read the comic book, he has the relationship and uh, I can't remember the woman before Lori um, that he had the relationship with the one who, who he's with when he becomes Dr. Manhattan. Um, 
and then he and he's with Lori. And those whole time, I don't think he ever in the comic book says that he loves them. Um, he's just with them because that's the person that he's with at that time. I think he truly loved Angela because he was willing to take this sacrifice. He was willing to do whatever it took to be with her, even if that meant suppressing his superpowers. And that to me is just an amazing love story right there. That, that idea that he was willing to, to suppress all that they didn't, you know, she didn't fall in love with Cal and then he became Dr. Manhattan and then went back to being Cal. She fell in love with Dr. Manhattan and Dr. Manhattan fell in love with her because she was going to, because of that moment when she's getting those guns and she's going to do everything in her power to save him, even though he's telling her it's not going to work. That's the moment when he fell in love with her. And then that moment, because he lives all these moments at the same time, that's the moment that he is willing to sacrifice his omnipotence. And I just, I, that just really gave me chills when I started to think about that, that he really did love her. Oh, yeah, I believe it. And that, that's what I got out of it. And that will lead me to my number one, right? Yeah, that's your number one. Yeah, well, my number one would be Adrian Veidt giving John, Dr. Manhattan, a way of being human. Now this is coming out, and he has to be again because Angela beat it out of John's body, <laughs> quote-unquote. Uh, now I'm hoping we see Dr. Manhattan do what he does best. I think this will be the end of the world, but a new one in Europa. Ooh, that's an interesting theory. We can explore that a little bit. Yeah. That's that is interesting. If if something happens that ends that life on Earth ends and they go to and Doctor Manhattan somehow takes them all to Europa to live in this whatever that that would that's an interesting theory of how the the season could end. I don't know. I don't know. If that is a little bit. That's a little out there. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. I just uh, I'm I'm really cautiously optimistic that Damon Lindelof is going to be able to stick this landing. I mean, he's not JJ Abrams. It's not lost. So I, I think he's, he's grown since lost. He's, he's gotten better. So I, I think we're going to get a really good episode here this, this coming Sunday when it all comes to an end. And I'm, I'm excited to see, uh, how it's how it is going to end i hope he makes it at least two hours <laughs> yeah I, I think i i looked at imdb and imdb already shows it only being like an hour and seven Darn it. so uh, <laughs> so sorry man I didn't mean to burst your bubble <laughs> i don't look at those uh, we've got, I, i've only got one quote here and it was just i thought it was i chuckled every time when he he claimed to be Dr. Manhattan and Angela looked at him and said, is this a Zeus thing? Because that was the whole <laughs> Greek mythology. Zeus would come down and, and be a different animal so he could interact with humans. I yeah. thought that was cool. Yeah, I love that. That's a great idea because he thinks he's so above humans. <laughs> Adrian Veidt, Ozymandias. Oh, my goodness. All right. So uh, do we have any quotes? I just gave mine. Ah, uh, you gave yours. yours. That's right. Yep. Uh, mine would be uh, Dr. Manhattan. Haven't you done anything you knew you weren't going to regret? And then Angela says, in regarding the attack in Vietnam. Yeah, that was another one of those interesting scenes where that kind of back and forth with him that you could definitely see that romance developing. Yeah, that's that's how it really started. And then I have one where... How did you know I was in on Europa? And Adrian Veidt goes, let's just say a little elephant told me. Hmm. That's a good thing because we saw a little elephant last episode. Yeah, and the whole Lady True, the the uh, the logo for Lady True's company is an elephant head. So I I don't I, I wonder if we're going to see how those how those two play together. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm curious because there's a lot going on in this show. Oh my goodness. Um uh my 
the only additional note that I would have based upon what's going on in this episode would be the Bible that was given to John in the scene when the couple from the castle that takes in John and his father, it's as if it was seeded into him to make his own version of Adam and Eve on another planet. Like yeah. He he envisioned this. Yeah, well they they made him promise. Remember she they it's it was really kind of a an interesting scene with them not having any clue what he was going to become because they said we want you to create something beautiful. And he says, "Oh, I will. I'll create something beautiful." Uh, out of this, because remember that that's the whole thing that they're telling him. They're trying to yeah. ex- kind of explain sex to him, and they're like, "Well, we were, we were creating something beautiful, and so we want you someday to create something beautiful." So yeah, I thought, and they're on visage, yeah, yeah, it, it, it made sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm I'm looking at my notes, and I think we've talked about just about everything that um, that I had, except a couple of things that I I thought was interesting is uh, just. In that final fight scene, when you know, even though they know that he he knows he's going to be captured, but yet he still, like you said, he doesn't change anything. He knows what's going to happen. He comes out and he just does it. But there was one, and I hope it's not just a throwaway line. I hope it ends up becoming important, but I don't know why it's important. When he's on the water, on the the pool, he says it's important for you to see me on the pool, hmm. and I, I I don't know. If that, you know, there that might be just a, a simple throwback to uh, when they're talking in the restaurant and she says, he says that someone's going to become me or something like that. And she says, well, can, can you do, oh no, that's when he's talking about if he can have children or not. And he says, I would never, pa- I would never pass on my powers un without, to someone without their consent. Yes. And, and she says, can you do that? And he goes, well, if I was pulverized or whatever and then and then was was uh, reduced to a paste that someone could ingest they could become me and she says the mm-hmm. whole thing about the egg she says so if you put yourself in this egg i could then eat the egg and you would become me and i'd be able to walk on water that's what she mm-hmm. says to him she says i'd become you and i'd be able to walk on water Ooh. so i don't know if that's going to have Play some sort of importance into the because it, it I just can't believe that Damon Lindelof they would put this throwaway line in there of him saying it's important for you to see me on the water and yeah exactly so yeah so that's uh, I I'm interested to see where that where that goes and if it does so yeah that's definitely a good pull from that I I love that idea and the fact that he does walk on water in that pool mm-hmm. and she sees him do that and she brought that up beforehand yeah like years yeah years so that, years. that's why i mean maybe it's just a call back to what she said in the restaurant but i just i think there's got to be something more to yeah. that to that line so i agree oh maybe it's one of the kids maybe or we'll see yeah i, I i'm uh we only got one episode left yeah. it's almost over mark <laughs> i know oh my goodness <laughs> What are we going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> um, so in comic talk, uh, you and I were talking a little bit before we started recording about DC is or the CW is doing with their DC shows. They're doing a five episode crossover of Crisis on Infinite Earths. And I, uh, I believe the order is we have Supergirl. Supergirl aired Sunday night, December 8th. Batwoman. Yep. Uh, aired Monday, December 9th, mm-hmm. I I believe. We're recording this on Tuesday. I think Black Lightning is... Nope. No. Which one is tonight? Tonight is Flash. Flash. Okay. Okay. So, uh, tonight is Flash. Uh, they eliminated Black Lightning from the actual Crisis. Oh, did they? But he... Okay. He does show up within Crisis, from what I'm told. Okay. But I watched Supergirl, I watched Batwoman, and oh my goodness. Uh, I just finished watching I just finished watching Supergirl before we started recording. I haven't watched Batwoman yet. So I, I have a question though. Sure. About a couple of things that I'm trying to understand. The mm-hmm. so the they're throwing out all these numbers 
and in in forgive me because I've only watched the, the first one, Supergirl, and that's really the only. Sure. I watched a little bit of, of Arrow many many years ago, so I don't know anything about these shows. Literally mm -hmm. nothing. Earth One. They keep mm -hmm. designating Earth One, Earth Thirty Eight, Earth Sixty Four, Earth whatever, Argo City, whatever number yeah. is Earth One. Is that supposed to be like the main Earth that we know of? Or yes, yeah, okay. It's the main quote unquote Earth. But yeah. the funny thing is, is that you see uh, Alexander Knox uh, from nineteen eighty nine, mm -hmm. uh, Bat. Batman and his Earth is destroyed. You see, uh, Burt Ward as right. sixty six Earth, quote unquote, because it's nineteen sixty six Batman, which is uh, Robin. Right, right. And I think I think those were just cameos. I don't think those were. They they I, definitely yeah. were. Yeah. But you know, and then on top of that, you have Earth One supposedly. Batman, which was Kevin Conroy and Batman, uh, Batwoman, I should say, sorry, Batwoman. And uh, the, the way they did that was so dark. I, because I, it, it, go ahead. No, no, it came from Kingdom Come and Kingdom Come, uh, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, all that in the comics. Right. At that point, uh, Batman has become almost like a god. And at that point, he destroyed Superman. And in this... Okay, this but that's is... all the comic book, right? I, yes. I, I, I want to focus on the TV show because that's the only thing I know. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm concentrating on the comic, on uh, right. the actual TV show. The, uh, the comic has Superman as his own world where uh, it's his own Kryptonian. That would be in uh, Metropolis. Whereas Batman in the comic book, he had his own Gotham, and he they were all gods within their own towns. And in the show, at this point, from my understanding, is, is that uh, Kingdom Come Batman had killed Kingdom Come Superman in his own world, and... <laughs> I'm I'm just I'm lost already. <laughs> I know I know you're lost, <laughs> dude. It's it's crazy. Because I'm I'm okay. So my, there's so many worlds. Yeah, and that's the thing. And that's and I mean that was the whole reason why they created the 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 trade originally. Anyway, was to get rid of some of these, from what I understand. And yeah, Marvel did something similar. And but uh, okay, so but it, back to the TV show. Okay, sure. Because I'm watching and I'm trying to understand because. Erica Durant, who I absolutely loved in Smallville. Oh, yeah. Played Lois Lane in Smallville. But she mm -hmm. plays... Now, she's Kara's mother in Supergirl, Correct. the TV show, right? Yeah. So she was there in Argo City with the Supergirl TV show Batman, the Supergirl TV show Lois Lane, and the child of... Superman, Jonathan Kent. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, Jonathan Kent, who is the child of Supergirl, Superman, and Supergirl Lois Lane, right? Exactly. Okay, and so when they show up in, in that episode and they mm -hmm. say your mother was killed, they're talking about the Erica Durant's character, Ara Zarel or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah, Kara's yeah, from mother, Argo City, right? In Supergirl, right? In exactly. The Supergirl universe. Okay, Whew. okay. That's that. That was the that was the first thing that confused me. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I, I recognized Erica Durant's right away, and I was like, "Wait a minute, isn't she Lois Lane from Smallville?" But okay, that, but she's... That, that's the whole common consensus about this. Is a lot of people are confused. I actually had to explain it to my coworker today. Okay, so basically, you have multiple universes. You're gonna have people of the same character, like you, you could see Tom Welling's Smallville's Clark Kent. Mm -hmm. You could see Tyler Hecklin's version of superman right you could also see brandon Routh's version of superman which was not the one from the movie not the one he played in the movie and, but oh then, yes but then it brandon is now but then brandon Routh also plays a character in supergirl as as <laughs> the adam yes right. so and that's <laughs> why they go hey what are you doing yeah, here? We're getting, oh no, yeah, we're getting confused. Yeah. yeah, because the actors are the same, but they're not playing the same characters as well. Exactly. Yeah. Whew, this whole thing is going to be. By the time this is so, done, we may have to do a whole episode on what we 
what <laughs> these yeah these yeah a, but, a lot of you guys if you haven't paying been paying attention to cw what's going on is multiple earths there could be people that look like other people that are other characters so what's going on is that brandon routh can be the atom and that particular character that plays the atom as well as uh kingdom comes version of superman which eventually came from the richard donner version of christopher reeve in superman one two and three and four as well as superman returns which brandon routh actually played so we have that superman right okay and then on, and on top of that we have kevin conroy's version of a Batman that is evil because he's gone south. So according to a lot of people out there that is mostly like fans like myself of the Batman the Animated Series, which Kevin Conroy had voiced Batman, has gone even darker than he was. He reduced Clayface to a puddle of mud. And that's what Batwoman encountered and realized that she is a key factor of that Gotham okay. attitude. You know? hmm. And then on top of that, we have Tyler Hecklin, who actually battled against Kingdom Come Superman, but they came to some sort of an agreement at certain points. Is that if in you the watch TV the show? Episode. Or yes. Is that, is that in the, the which which TV show? Uh, if you watch Batwoman. Okay. I haven't they watched actually yet. meet. Yeah, you gotta watch it, dude. So uh, we got that. On top of that, we have Green Arrow dying, but he's brought back through the Lazarus Pit, which a lot of people don't know. If you read the comics and you go through everything, yes, Oliver Queen was brought back through the Lazarus Pits in the Crisis comic or the trade paperback. But we haven't seen. Well, no, was that in the Batwoman episode last night? Exactly. Okay, yeah, There's I, a I lot going on, dude. Yeah, you, I haven't watched that one. Yet. I've got to catch, catch up. <laughs> so, 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 what we'll do is, so if I understand correctly, I was looking at, at the the schedule of events. It looks like yeah. so. So it's it was Supergirl Sunday night, Batwoman Monday mm -hmm. night. Uh, today's Tuesday. It's the Flash. Flash. Uh, and then when is the next? When is part four? Part four would be Arrow. So From that's the arrow that's not going to air until January. Is it? I I believe I looked up correctly. That's the arrow that's not gonna that's not gonna air until January. So this, there might be a Legends of Tomorrow. Hold on, I'll tell you because I, I was just looking. Take it a up. look, man. I was just looking it up yeah. the other day because Arrow. Hold on, let me up here. Season eight. Yes, the Crisis on Infinite Earths Part Four title is Episode Eight of Season Eight. Of Arrow, which is not airing until January fourteenth, twenty twenty. So we're getting these three parts, and then nothing else on Crisis until January. And then I think January oh. is—I don't know what the last, what the part five is going to be. I don't know if that's oh, going to be. Oh darn it! Uh, we'll have <laughs> like to, lightning. Who knows? We'll have to find out. Yeah, we're part five. So yeah, so once I get these three watched that are that are in it, then we can talk more about Crisis yeah. specifically with the TV show. So. Yeah, and also listen to DC Primetime, listen to Ben Beck, and they Absolutely. have more information, honestly. Uh, ben is more up to it. Me, I just am just a watcher, and I love this. Yes. And I, I don't want to be Watu. Yeah, no, but definitely, Marvel definitely, we, we tell everybody, recommend, yeah, I just listened to their episode, uh, their DC Primetime episode that led up to the crisis starting from last week. I, I listened to that one uh, the other day. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing their breakdown of these three episodes. I think they're doing one episode covering all three of these, these shows in, in this week. I think that's what he said they're doing. So that'd be amazing. So yeah, go, go listen to DC primetime on the next level podcast network and uh, listen to Ben back, send in feedback. If you have any information that you want to divulge or your thoughts and theories, because I did. Mm -hmm. And I love these shows. I just love watching them as they come by. And I sent in Ben uh, a couple of feedbacks regarding non-spoilery, obviously. But, you know, just 
send in your feelings about the shows because they're amazing. And I, I never got into Arrow. I watched the first season. I could not get into it. But as soon as they had Barry Allen, I, I had to get into it. And I started watching Flash after episode three. And I was just brought in completely. And I love Flash. I love Legends. I love Supergirl. Uh, I actually had to watch that when it first came out. And when it was originally on another channel. Not on the CW. And when they brought it onto the CW. I was so happy because great. Now we have something. And they're completing everything that they started within Flash. Because... If you watch the first season of Flash, they talk about Crisis. And I said it last week. Yes, you need to watch season one of Flash and continue to watch. And if you binge watch, that would be amazing to go through. But there's so much in between that's going on that, you know, pertains to Crisis. But they did a last minute changes within the script for Crisis. And... They had to move it forward faster because they were ending Arrow. So, we if you watch the first episode of Supergirl this season, you do see Oliver Queen die, but yet he comes back. So, wait, wait uh, he died in Supergirl? He died last yeah. night in Supergirl. That was Batwoman. No, no, Sunday night. I just watched. I literally just watched Sunday night. Supergirl oh, okay, yeah, episode. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where he died. That's, yeah, yeah. That's the first episode of Supergirl this year. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, not 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 the first episode of Supergirl. This oh, the year, first episode of, but, of Crisis. Of Crisis. Right. Yes. Okay. Now I'm now I'm tracking. Okay. You 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 lost me a second because I I I I was I was trying to to figure out what you. Were... I, I'm trying to go in the the frame of mind of Crisis. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. No, no, yeah. In the first episode <laughs> of Crisis, you know, by the time you guys hear yeah. this, you should have already seen it. It's not a spoiler. Um, exactly. Uh, and, really. But then, like you said, in Batwoman, I haven't watched Batwoman yet. So, uh, oh, I'll... Batwoman's amazing, and I recommend it highly. A lot of people hated it. I loved it. Yeah. I mean, I'm literally just. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I am not even going to try. To go back and watch the other previous seasons of these. Shows. Oh, don't, don't! I am don't, literally just know. watching Crisis. I'm just DVRing these these Crisis episodes. And, well, and that's the cool them, thing so. about this. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I'm going to say this to all you listeners. That's the cool thing about these crossovers. You don't necessarily have to watch previous seasons. Yeah, you could just watch the actual crossover episodes. They had one last year, which was a major crossover. Which we had Captain Cold, we had uh, what was it? Uh, I forget Rory's name, but he is the Heat in Legends of Tomorrow, and they have a whole thing about uh, Nazis and everything else and all different worlds that leads up to this. So if you watch the mini series of the crossovers, it's amazing because. You could just watch all the crossovers and not have to watch anything in yeah. between. I'm excited for it. I think what we, I think, yeah, we, we should do a whole episode on just the crisis stuff. I don't care about the other stuff. So. Oh wow, we're crossing. <laughs> then we have to get Ben back on this because we'll Ben see. would love to be on it. See, well, he may be he may be all crisis out by that by that time. So um. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I know Ben wants to talk about it as much as I do because I love this idea. Uh, like I said to you guys, I love Flash. I've been watching it. I've been watching Legends of Tomorrow. I've been watching Supergirl. I'm not much of an Arrow fan. I'll watch key episodes. I will definitely watch key episodes of Arrow. But I tried and I could not get into it. I, I like Steven. Steven Amell is amazing as Arrow. I, like I said, I, I tried watching Arrow and couldn't get into it either. So yeah, I, totally I, it, you there. I, I, I like the idea and the ideal of Arrow, and it did well for several seasons. I, I think it had a few bad seasons, according to what Ben had told me, but I, I just could not get into it after season one. Mm. And he goes, season two was amazing. And I, I'm knowing me, I'm probably just going to binge watch everything when I have a week off, and I'm just going to be like, oh, okay, I'll just watch. Oh, okay, I see where he was coming with that. Oh, yeah, that season was bad. But the thing is, is that these are great shows and they were great seasons. I was hoping for more because, honestly, 
we got the little. Uh, I, I, this is a little bit of a spoilery if you didn't watch last night's Batwoman, but they did have Danny Elfman's music from 1989 Batman, and that sent a chill down my spine. I love the idea that they got the go ahead, especially with Smallville when they had uh, "Can You Save Me" that song. Yeah. Yeah. When let's they, when let's they hold out. Let's hold out on our, on our talk about crisis until let's do a whole episode. Because uh, I'm, <laughs> right, I'm ready to wrap this up, man. I'm sorry. All right, cool, uh, dude. Let's, no let's go ahead and wrap this. Let, let's let's plan to do a whole episode on just the crisis. At least the three episodes we're going to get uh, this week on crisis. Let's let's plan to do a whole episode on that. Sure, and then we could probably lead into the boys and our review of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's at the that, same time. Once once Watchmen ends, Watchmen's going to end next week, so we're going to have a few weeks there break in between things. So, yeah. All right, sounds good. So we have a special thanks to Kirk Manley for our artwork for our podcast. Check out Kirk Manley on his website, which would be www.studiokm.com, or you could see him on Twitter at BatmanKM. Or you could follow him on Instagram, which would be at BatmanKM. Check out his art at BatmanKM.DeviantArt.com. If you have something that you would like to hire Kirk for, you can email him at Kirk at StudioKM.com. As always, we recommend other podcasts, anything on the Next Level Podcast Network, specifically DC Primetime. Also, the joint podcast between house between podcastica and next level network which is lost we have to go back lost revisited and we recommend highly highly recommend tv podcast industries podcast they are covering watchmen they covered the boys last season they are going to cover the boys season two when it comes out as well so derek and the guys over at tv podcast industries are amazing yeah. and of course strange indeed is a podcastica podcast they are doing Castle Rock, doing season two of Castle Rock right now, and uh, we recommend those. If you'd like to submit your feedback to us, you can go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can also email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The T-O is spelled spelled out right there in the middle with the number one at gmail.com. Or you can call us and leave a voicemail at 845 350 2095 that's 845 350 2095 and you can hear us on many various podcast platforms whatever podcast player you choose to use if they allow you to give us a review we do ask you give us a nice five star review if you can type up some words in there and give us some uh, nice things to say about us that would be cool too we will read those on air when we get them yeah definitely and please send in that feedback if you can. And for those of you who want to hear me elsewhere, you can actually hear me on the Walking Dead Talk Through with Brian Malosh on the Talk Through Media Network. That would be talkthroughmedia.com. We review The Walking Dead each week. There will be a link for Talk Through Media for others to listen to as well. Listen to us on talkthroughmedia.com. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We are currently working on a lot of things. Uh, right now, I believe Brian's working on the Picard cast, as well as Star Trek Discovery po uh, you know, podcast as well. So uh, keep in touch there, or here, or through talkthroughmedia.com on its website. And there is a feedback post there too that you could actually link to and send feedback with. Yes, next week will be our last episode for Watchmen. It will be Watchmen season 1 episode 9. I don't have the title in front of me. No, that's not what the title is. I don't actually have the title in front of me. But um we'll put up a feedback post for that on our Facebook page and please use that to send us any of your yeah, feedback. Yeah, definitely. Send some feedback if you can. If not, Keep listening. We love you. And that will be for tonight, basically. Uh, thanks for everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. Good night, everybody. Good night.